Art Bryles is the new offensive coordinator at Grambling State. Savannah State is as dominant as ever heading into the SEAC tournament. And we have some HBCU players drafting in the USFL startup draft. Oh, yeah. It's locked on HBCU. Play my music. <laughs> Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU Athletics, Monday through Friday. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports Editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day, every day. And Art Bryles, Art Bryles is the new offensive coordinator at Grambling State. And I am not a fan, not at all, because Grambling, with this move, you have just sent a message to me, all of your fans, all of your students, that winning is more important than culture. And football is more important than all of it. Does not matter. Oh, you're, you're, you're somebody in the business school? Football. You're in somebody in the communi communication department? Football. You will always come second to this. And it's something that we knew. Like, this isn't anything new. This isn't groundbreaking. They're not the only ones. However, every time that it's said or shown to you, it's very disappointing because it's like, here we go again. I know it, but now you're showing it. And I can only imagine how the women on campus feel hearing this news. How, how do you know who you can go to? How do you know who you're safe to talk to? But, ladies, if you want to take solace, you can take solace in the fact that Art Browse helped RG3 get a, a highest trophy, right? So you can take you can take solace in that if you ask Grambling. When I look at this, and I talked about this on the podcast, I think last week, it was a report at that time. And I came on and I tried to be impartial, said, you know, Art Browse did this, this what he can be as a coach. Both of those things can be true. They can be, and they'll have to be. Um, but now it's concrete and I have something to say because I hope that it was going to be the last time that we had to talk about it. I hope that it was just a report came and came and went right, but it didn't. So now I'm coming on to say, I'm not a fan of this at all. Not in the slightest. I don't think that this was a right move. I think this was a terrible move. I don't care the offensive success that he's had. And listen, as time goes on and by time goes on, probably next week, when we're talking about grambling football, Art Browse will have to come up. Art Browse is a part of Grambling football now. So that means that Art Browse will have to be a part of Grambling football conversations. As much as I hate it, that is the truth. He will have to be part of Grambling football conversations. But we're not there yet. Right now we're discussing the hire. And he who has a history with Art Browse, and I think that's, this, that's where this came from. Because almost a year, I think just a year after he was dismissed from Baylor for, com, com, excuse me, repeatedly covering up sexual assaults by his football players. After he was removed from Baylor, about a year or so later, he came and talked or was with the, the Browns when he was there. He didn't have a job, but he just came in for a day or two. That was just a year later. It tells you what Hugh thinks. I've been down before was what he said. Art wasn't down, Hugh. Art wasn't down. Art covered up sexual assault. Is that what you consider down? Because now it's going to make people look at you a certain kind of way. All of the favor that you built up since you've been in Grambling. All of that? How much of that is taken away now? And I'll ask. I'll get people on here who are from Grambling. And we'll see what the public, what the public opinion is, not just on the Art Browse hire, but also on Hugh Jackson now. You were so likable. You're so likable. And this doesn't mean that he will react in the same way. But you don't know. Because you're vouching for him. In my mind, Hugh vouched for him. Art's not here without Hugh. Hugh had to vouch for him. So now, who do I go talk to? By letting Bryles come into the, the culture, it almost says 
I'm okay with what his history is. I'll deal with it. There is no justification. We were on Locked On today. Make sure you guys are checking that out. Locked On today. Asking what's the justification. There is no justification. The justification that they will try to use is that, hey, you know, he's going to help us win games. He's going to help us doing that. And the, the way I look at it is this move is detrimental to the culture of Grambling. This is detrimental because now when you look at Grambling, yes, you're going to think Hugh Jackson, but you cannot not think about. And yes, I know some people have problems with double negatives. I know when to use a double negative to prove a point. I, I have no problem with people using double negatives. But you cannot not think about Art Bryles. You can't. Because all of the things that he's done, if you're a student on campus, how many times do I have to pose this question just for it to be understood how serious that it is? If you're a woman who is, God forbid, and we don't want these things, knock on wood, but say something happens to you by, by way of a football player, do you feel comfortable going to tell somebody? How do you know that person won't just tell Art? You know you can't tell Art. You know you're not telling Art. But how comfortable do you feel telling Hugh? This does not mean that Hugh will react the same way. And at the end of the day, that is up to Hugh. That's how Hugh makes a difference. And I said that on the last episode that I, that I discussed that. I'll, I'll repeat it again. That is how Hugh differs himself from Bryles. But how do you even feel comfortable going to him? I don't know. I can't answer that. Maybe you feel comfortable because Bryles was able to lead Baylor to multiple Big 12 championships. This move is so bad for a couple of reasons. One, Doug Williams has disowned Grambling. Doug Williams, the legend, has disowned Grambling. He will forever be a Tiger. He'll always be a Grambling legend. But when asked if he, how he felt about this, he was very clear. He was very clear. This was his quote. He said, I'm not a fan of it at all. I'm very, very disappointed in Grambling. I really am. I talked to the AD a couple times. They knew where I stood, but they did it. And if, they, and if that's what they want to do, that's fine. I'm out. When asked, if he will support them, he said no, because supporting them is condoning them. He said Shaq feels the same way. This is who, this is Doug Williams. We're talking about Doug Williams here. And he's disowned Grambling? Said I can't support Grambling? And you knew, Grambling knew how bad this was going to look. Because hours, I believe it was just hours, before the news actually broke that it was official, Grambling State spokesperson, they were unnamed, of course, but they're said to have said, this is the quote, there's no truth in these rumors. No truth in the rumors, huh? No truth in the rumors. It's not a rumor anymore. I saw him getting interviewed. In 2018, the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the CFL went to hire Art Bryles. And when they went to hire him, there was so much backlash. He was going to be like an assistant coach. There was so much backlash that they changed their mind and decided not to hire him. It's not too late. Grambling, you could do that. I don't care how many Heisman trophies RG3 has. I don't care how many Big 12 championships that they have. The students on campus need to feel safe and feel like they have somebody that they can go talk to if anything were to happen. The culture is one of doubt because this extends past football. I understand that Art Browse came in to win games, have a high-powered offense. That's what he came in to do. And that's what you want? That's fine. Just understand that it's coming at the detriment of your culture. It's coming at the detriment of your students, your student body, especially your women students, who don't know who they can feel safe talking to if something happens to them by a football player. That's what it is. But okay, when I give all of these concerns and then I give the accolades of Art Browse, is not in a way to actually say Art Browse was deserving because he wasn't. He didn't deserve this second chance. But I'm sure that that's exactly what Grambling people and Grambling officials will tell you. But understand, RG3 got a highest man. Baylor got Big 12 championships. That's not okay with me, and it shouldn't be okay with them. But obviously it is. Winning is more important than the culture at Grambling. And football, don't worry, students, will always come before you. But going forward, let's lighten it up. Let's talk about Savannah State the women's basketball team, because they're coming in and they are they are going to be the favorite in the SEAC tournament next Wednesday. And they deserve to be because they have been the most dominant force in that conference all year long. But first, I want to tell you about Run Your Pool, because 
it's March Madness time, right? We're going into the last, this is the last week of all February dates. March is next week. It's literally around the corner. And March comes with March Madness. It's NCAA time. It's time to build out your brackets. And there's no better place to build out your brackets than runyourpool.com. Listen, I vouch for it because they have one thing that makes me feel comfortable enough to go do my own bracket. I'm a novice. I am a novice when it comes to just understanding March Madness and all the things that come with it. However, Run Your Pool allows me and it gives me the chance to educate myself by giving me intel and details on these teams. ESPN and CBS aren't doing that. They're not helping me out in that way. That's why I feel comfortable enough. And if I vouch for it, then why would I like why why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you believe in something that I'm going into myself? Go to runyourpool.com slash locked on. And if you want to build something for yourself in the business side, maybe at your at your office, maybe something with your family, use the promo code Pure Madness and get $10 off at checkout. Runyourpool.com slash locked on. It's the only place to build out your brackets for March Madness. Also, let me tell you about Built Bar because I love these things. I have a couple in my room right now. I love Built Bars because they give me so much versatility and I don't have to feel ashamed with however I want to use it. Sometimes I want to eat it before I go work out because I want the protein, right? But sometimes I don't. And there's no shame in that. Sometimes I just want a snack. Sometimes I just want something that's covered in chocolate and delicious. Sometimes I want something that has marshmallows in it. And that's the Built Bar Puffs. There's so many different flavors that I know you can choose from. I was on the I was on the website just the other day talking to my friend about it. Built, Built Bar is honestly one of the best tasting protein bars and one of the best tasting candy bars. Like you usually don't have that combination, but with built with built bar, you do. So go to built.com and use the promo code locked15 for 15% off your offer. I promise you, whether it's your first case or your next case, it will not be your last. All right, so we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked On HBCU. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day every day. And today's word of the day is utmost, meaning of the greatest and highest degree, quantity, number, or amount, or situated at the farthest and most distant point. And we just discussed something of the utmost importance in Art Browse. And now I want to lighten up the mood. And I want to discuss my Tigers. It's been a long time. And now I'm not talking about my Texas Southern Tigers. I talked about them guys not that long ago. I'm talking about my Savannah State Lady Tigers. Yes, my adopted HBCU basketball team, Savannah State, right? It's been too long. But they're going into the SEAC tournament as the number one seed and the most dominant team in the conference. It's honestly that simple. SEAC tournament starts on, on Wednesday. And Savannah State deserves to be that number one team. You look at everything that they've done, and I'm going to split the season up into two parts. I'm going to split it up, but first I want to talk about them as a whole first. And after getting off to the best start of their last 20 years as a basketball program, they started off 14-0. and they, they lost the game. And if you remember, we made a lot about that game, and that's where we're going to split it up. We're going to split it up before and after, and that's the only game that they lost all year. They started off 14-0. and After that game, they were 14-1. and They have rattled off 11 straight victories since. So let's divide it. Basically, we're going to look at the first 14 games before, and we're going to look at the 11 games after. Because if you remember, I I talked about this game. It was the Benedict College game, and it was a game that had a lot of history behind it, a lot of history between Savannah State and Benedict. However, after that game, I discussed they lost, you know, and after that game, I discussed how you bounce back will be the definition of your season. And they defined their season with perfection, you know? And though that can't be the literal definition, immaculate, greatness, you know, resilience, any of those words I feel like would fit. They've been absolutely great. Let's look at it before because they had a chance to fold. They had a chance to lay down or have this affect them, and they did not in the slightest. And I'm glad I'm able to talk about them before the tournament. So let's discuss it. 14-0 to start, 11-0 to end. 25 and one to, to at the end of the season. Let's start before. Let's start before. Before the, the Benedict game, they were winning games by an average of 23.6 points. Only allowed two, two points, I mean, excuse me, two teams to reach 70 points. On the offensive side, they were averaging 80.8. And on the defensive side, they were allowing 57 per game. So what you see right there is a team that was absolutely dominant. They had a 50-point win in that margin. And it's even because they had a 50 point win afterwards as well. So it wasn't like that just changed the whole dynamic of the average margin of victory. But they were winning most of their games by double digits. 
And those are some of the things that continue to stay the same. Yes, most of their victories by double digits. Their margin of victory stayed large. And at the end of the day, offensively, they were scoring a lot of points. Defensively, they weren't allowing a lot. That's a recipe for victories at the end of the day, right? That's what it is. If you're scoring a lot of points and you're not allowing a lot, you're going to win a lot of games. So after this Benedict game, they lost that game. And I thought that, man, as a coach, this was going to be a very important point in your season. You know, you were at a nice little crossroads of you could falter. You could feed into maybe feeling like this team just has your number. Or you can build from it. And they built from it quickly. And along this stretch, and I think this might have been the most important thing, they got that monkey off their back. You know, they beat Benedict in this 11-game stretch. So they played them twice in the year. They lost the first game. They won the second one. This was the first time that they beat them since they've been in this conference. Savannah State has not beat BC in the last couple of years since joining the SIAC. So for them to finally get this monkey off of their back, I said, that's my girls. I have pride. I have pride, man. This is not my school in the slightest, but after talking about them, after looking at their, their stretch of victories, we discussed this going into the end of 2021, and we talked about it leading up in 2022 as well. This was a team that's been really good. And I think they deserve all the praise. And they've deserved it. I mean, they've earned it. So after the Benedict game, they've had an average margin of victory of 20 points. So just a slight slight drop. Not that much. But they're scoring so much more. They're allowing a little bit more points. But they're scoring 83.3. They're averaging, um, averaging 83.3. They're allowing 63.3. So when you look at it, I said, this team has not missed a beat. Yes, their defense is a little bit Scoring, I mean, allowing a little bit more points. Um, their uh, their margin of victory is slightly down. But am I really going to knock them for a, a drop in three points of margin of victory when you're still averaging 20 points per victory? That's how much you're winning by. Am I really going to knock them? No, I can't. I can't knock them. But as a whole, this season, like let's not let's take it away from having two parts, but then let's also just bring it. Let's bring it together now. This team has been absolutely dominant, and they they wrapped it up. They had the number one seed after knocking off Tuskegee, but then they went ahead and just said, you know, I'm going to put the finishing touches on Fort Valley State as well to end the season. But they are your number one seed. They have dominated basically everybody that they, that they have faced. They deserve to be this number one seed. They've earned it by record. They they deserve to be the favorite, and I got them winning the SEAC tournament. I'm, I'm riding with y'all, man. I'm riding with my Lady Tigers. You know, my adopted HBCU basketball team. Going forward, as we wrap up the show, we're going to be discussing the HBCU players who were drafted into the USFL startup draft, but also why it's not just the players being picked. And this represents so much more. This represents the continuation of a dream for all of these young players. But first, I want to tell you about betonline.net because betonline is the best place to wager on all of your sports. Listen, we're talking about March Madness. But let's not forget about the NCAA World Series. You can bet on that as well. Texas right now has the best odds, or depending on the best odds, worst odds, depending on if you're a betting person. I know we want those lower odds so we can get more money faster. But they have the best odds. They are the favorites in the NCAA World Series. So in addition to that, you also have basketball. I'm thankful that my guy Jai is okay. I was worried when I seen him get hurt. But he's still okay. We're still rocking with them Grizzlies, okay? Um, they need to have a prop bet on when Zion Williamson will come back. That's my pitch to them. All right, bet online. Let's add that and say the mouth of the South did it. Let's mouth of the South sponsor that. All right. But they have so many things without my sponsorship. Because when I look at they have player prop bets, they have individual uh performances, team games, they have boxing, hockey, UFC. They have everything that you could possibly need, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So when I look at betonline.net, with all of the things that they provide, there's no doubt to me that they are the best in the business and the fastest and easiest way to wage on all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, as we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked On HBCU, the USFL provides the HBCU players with an opportunity to continue their dream. And listen, a lot of people say the dream is getting to the NFL, and it is. It was mine as a kid, but that's because I didn't know any other leagues. At the end of the day, the true dream is to continue playing football for the rest of your life. When we were young, 
We didn't say, I want to be an NFL player. I think after a while we did. But think about when I'm five, six years old. Teacher says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I didn't say I want to be an NFL player. I said I want to be a football player. Because at the end of the day, that's what it was about. The NFL was just the only place in my mind. Mind you, I'm young, right? So in my mind, that was the only place that I could go play football at. I didn't think about the CFL and things like that. I didn't think about the USFL. But now you can't tell me somebody who it's like, man, you know, I didn't make the roster. I didn't make the training camp cut. Or they're not really picking me up right now. Those guys don't want to go play in the USFL, get to still play, get paid to play too. Because as time goes on, yes, we think about money. We get older, right? I'm not five years old anymore. I understand that I need to work. I need to get paid to live. So that, that's realistic. You know, you can't just play football for free. So it's great to be able to play in the USFL. But at the end of the day, that dream, that dream was to just play football before anything else, before any leagues came in. I just want to play ball. That's it. That's all I want to do. So I think that this gives an, a very interesting opportunity because a lot of times these guys overlook their opportunities. And let's not be, let's not, let's not lie about it, right? The USFL, the CFL, things like that. I've seen players go from there and get into the NFL. So this doesn't have to be the end of the road. This can just be another avenue, another route to get where you want to get. And even if it is, even if it is the end of the road, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying that there's people who go from there. I think of Delvin Bro. I think of P.J. Tucker. Those are the people I think of immediately when I think of CFL or USFL, XFL guys who were able to make it into the pros from their, um, from how they played there. So let's talk about these guys. Let's, let's give a list of these players who are going to be in the USFL. They got drafted in the startup draft. I want to read them, and then I'm going to tell you where they were drafted. But also, I'm going to give a, a look into just what it means or some of the trends that go into it. Because now we know what the important part is, right? We know that they, they allow you to continue a dream. But now let's talk about the players themselves, the guys whose dreams are continuing. I want to talk about that. And I'm going to give them an order. So the first person who got drafted was Malik Hamner, defensive end out of Jackson State. He got drafted in round four to the New Jersey Generals. Nigel Chavez got drafted. He was a defensive end out of uh, North Norfolk State to the New Orleans Breakers. Chidi Okiki. Round five to the Pittsburgh Maulers. Calvin Ashley, he got drafted to the New Jersey Generals. Joshua Taylor, Mississippi Valley State offensive lineman. Sorry, Ashley was a FAMU offensive tackle. Kiki was an offensive tackle out of Tennessee State. Joshua Taylor, offensive lineman out of Mississippi Valley State. He got drafted to the Michigan Panthers. Terrell Braun, Bonds, cornerback, Tennessee State. Round nine to the Pittsburgh Maulers. Brian Mills, cornerback, North Carolina Central. Round 10, Birmingham uh, Stallions. DeAndre Johnson, quarterback, Texas Southern. Round 12, New Jersey Generals. Peyton Ramsey, wide receiver, Tuskegee. Round 16, Birmingham Stallions. Manessa Bailey, Manessa Bailey, wide receiver, Morgan State. Round 17, Birmingham Stallions. I love Birmingham Stallions starting to rack it up, right? Chad Williams, wide receiver, Grambling, New Orleans Breakers. So we keep it in the state, going from Grambling to New Orleans. You know, I got love for that. My team is the Breakers. Trust and believe that. New Orleans, everything, right? So I'm, I'm rocking with them breakers in the USFL. Sean Brown, center, Mississippi Valley State, goes to the Philadelphia Stars. Tim Walton, offensive, I mean, outside linebacker, Tennessee, Texas Southern, not Tennessee, um, Texas Southern, New Jersey Generals. Solomon Wise, offensive, why keep saying offensive? Outside linebacker, Alcorn State, Philadelphia Stars. And then lastly, you have Brandon Barnes tied in, Alabama State, out of, um, out of Alabama State, going number 30, excuse me, in the 30th pick to the Houston Comrades. So, or Gamblers, excuse me, Comrades. You got Brandon Barr's tied in Alabama State going round 34 to the Houston Gamblers. And when reading this list, I think there's a couple of trends that I want to highlight real quick, and that's the fact that Tennessee State, Texas Southern, and Mississippi Valley, surprisingly Mississippi Valley, but they had the most amount of players drafted at two. The Generals had four. They win. They were in the tight competition with the Stallions. They had to pick somebody late to get that, that edge. They were both at three, but, you know, the Stallions came up late. They had three, three players after round 10 that they picked. And the New York, New Jersey General said, I got to get on it. But overall, I want to highlight two players. I want to highlight first Malik Hamner out of Jackson State. He was swag player of the uh, swag special teamer twice, black four field goals. And I think that's something that gives him an immediate edge because some of those things are the technique, their intelligence, and it's just understanding how that happens. And I think that's something he could immediately 
impact the game at on the USFL level, in addition to also being an all swag defensive lineman. So I think there's an opportunity for him. He's signed a contract to go in with Jacksonville before, so he has a little bit of NFL experience as far as just being on a roster for, for a little bit. And then the last person I want to highlight is DeAndre Johnson, who he was the first and only quarterback to get picked. And I thought that, you know, he has talent, fourth, fourth most uh, passing yards at offensive, excuse me, fourth most passing yards at Texas Southern in the last 22 years. He was fourth in rushing on the team when he was there. So he was a dual threat quarterback who I felt like was not helped by his offensive line at the time. Y'all might know him from last chance to you. I know him from Texas Southern. Um, I never watched last chance to you. And they had to inform me of who he was when he came on campus. But overall, I just know him as a quarterback at Texas Southern. That's all that really matters here now. I don't care about when he was on Netflix. But overall, I think that he's a guy who has talent. Just kind of disappointing that he's the only one to get drafted. And he didn't get drafted to round 12. So. We'll see. He's at the New Jersey Generals, but we'll see what it really matters or what it really means as far as if he gets that opportunity. I hope he does, because I would love to see him with some better protection. I, I will be watching as the season starts in April. But overall, this gives all these kids, all of these men, and they're not kids, all of these men chances to just continue the dream. And that dream is to play football. It just so happens to be in the USFL. I'm excited for them, and they should be excited for themselves, and you should be excited for them. We got some players. We got 15 players in the USFL that came from HBCUs. But I appreciate you making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day. Every day, next week, we'll be back at it again. I think we're going to get James Hadden not to come back on the show and discuss just what's going on, what's the public perception and the reaction to the hiring of Art Bryles in Grambling. I'm excited for that interview. But for your second listen of the day, make sure you're checking out Locked on NFL Draft because that's not this is not the only place to get your draft news. Locked on NFL Draft is giving you everything that you need. Former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker and Ryan Tracy breaking down the draft for you. Leaning up, we got a couple of months away, but these are some of the things that you got to know right away so that you can be the smart guy watching and saying, I know who's going to get picked too and why. All right. But in the meantime, in between time, y'all can find me on that blue app, that bird, yes, Twitter at South Exclusive. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.